Amen. Come on, Brother Chris. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. You know that I love to his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. You know that I love to praise his holy name because he's my rock, y'all. My rock, my rock, my sword, and, and he's my will, he's my, my will in the middle of the will. I know that he'll never, he'll, he'll never, never let me down. He's just a jewel, some way that I have found. Oh, won't you sing hallelujah? Hallelujah, I love to praise his name, church sing hallelujah, hallelujah, I love to praise his name, you know that I love to praise his holy name, I'm singing I love to to praise his holy name because he's my rock, y'all. My rock, my rock, my sword and shield, and he's my will. He's my, my will in the middle of the will. I know that he'll never, he'll never, never let me down. Cause he's just a Jew, some way. Won't you sing hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Church, sing hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Keep singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, I love to praise his name. You know that I love to praise his holy name. I'm singing, I love to, to praise his holy name. Let the Lord's church say amen. amen. If God has been good to you, say amen again. Amen. If you're glad to be on this side of life amen. and not six feet under this morning, amen. somebody ought to say amen. amen. For we give honor to God for this occasion that he had allowed us to gather under the canopy of heaven that we may be able to sing praises unto his name because he is rightly deserving of such, that we may put aside the things that we may be dealing with in our everyday life and give God the praise, the honor, and the glory that he is rightly deserving of. We are privileged, we are delighted, and we are encouraged uh, to be in your presence on this morning, that we might be able to say something this morning and hopefully this afternoon that may encourage us on this journey called life as we strive to make it from this time side of life to God's heavenly and eternal glory. All of us are going on the same journey. We're traveling down the same road, but hopefully we will all arrive at the same destination. And that destination is to be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to be able to reign with him and live with him forever. 
We want to thank Brother Thompson, uh, my father, one of my fathers in the gospel. I tell everybody that Fleming Sr. is 1A and Brother Thompson is 1B. And, and we're just delighted to be in his presence, to be able to stand in his pulpit. Uh, we thank the wonderful elders, Brother Lanier and Brother Ward. And uh, we, we want these men to know that we admire them and we love them and we have a great deal of respect and admiration for them. We thank them for their tutelage and uh, being able to sit under their feet and to be able to uh, spend time uh, with them. And to this wonderful congregation, it is good to be back home among the wonderful saints at Green Meadow. Uh, This is a special place filled with special people. And we're just so thankful to God to be able to come and to be with you on this morning. So many wonderful faces that we have not seen in a while, and we want you to know that we are delighted to be able to be with you on this morning. Uh, We would call names, but we don't want to leave anybody out, but I must say that it's good to see my brother, Brother David Meek, uh, co-laborer in the gospel, a a great gospel preacher. Uh, If you don't mind me aging you a little bit, Brother Meek, uh, uh, one of our, if you, if you were called, one of our godfathers of the gospel. Amen. It's just good to have him and his lovely wife and Krista uh, as well. It's, it's just good to see each and every one of you. We bring you greetings from the Richland Avenue congregation there in Waverly. Uh, we, we, we want you to know that they're not going to be able to be with us on today. Uh, as Brother Paul Jones, the East Side congregation there in Camden, Tennessee, uh, we'll begin a gospel meeting today, so they will be there supporting them. Uh, but they send their love uh, to each and to every one of you. I, I tell you, God has blessed us, Brother Thompson. Uh, blessed us to be with a, a wonderful, wonderful group of people there at Richland Avenue. And, and, and we just love them uh, so very much. And I, I feel kind of strange when I'm not with them. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, so we, we ask you just pray for them as uh, one of our brethren, Brother Tony Burns Sr., uh, will be laboring in the word on today. We live in a time of uncertainty. We're living in a time of economic uncertainty. Uh, we're living in a time of worldwide uncertainty. Uh, we find that Uh, There's trouble in the Ukraine, Uh, there's trouble in Afghanistan, and there's trouble in Syria, and uh, and all throughout the world there was a great deal of uh, instability and uncertainty. Uh, We can look even close right here at home, and we see that we're living in a society of uncertainty. Uh, we're struggling now because we're unsure whether or not that two men can lawfully uh, get married and, and whether or not two women ought to be married. We're living in times of uncertainty. Uh, we're living in times of uncertainty uh, where you're not even uh, sure whether your children will be safe now going to the schoolhouse where they can learn to read and to write, and to add, and subtract, multiply, and divide. Uh, We're living in times of uncertainty today because uh, we're not even sure whether or not the church house is safe anymore. Uh, No doubt we're living in times of uncertainty. Crime is at an all-time high. Young people are are killing themselves and, and killing one another. We're living in times of uncertainty. Gang violence is uh, at an all-time high. Uh, It used to be the gangs were only in the city of Chicago, but now we've got gangs, Brother Thompson, even in Waverly, Tennessee, because we're living in times of uncertainty. The family is dealing with uncertainty. Uh, Fathers are absent from the home. Uh, Mothers are having to fulfill both role of father and mother. Children are being rebellious and disrespectful. We're living in times, Brother Turner, of uncertainty. And it would be very easy 
in these times of uncertainty to want to give up. To throw up our hands and say that there is nothing that can be done. Uh, to, to, to be able to, uh, to lose hope. Uh, to lose our grip. To give up not only on ourselves, but to give up on God. I want us to know this morning that from time to time in life, all of us are going to have a cup. But I want us to realize that in that cup, there may be some discouragement. In that cup, there may be disillusionment. Inside of that cup, there may be sorrow, pain, and agony. And sometimes we may hope that the cup will simply go away. But I want us to know that there are going to be times in life this morning when the cup simply will not pass. That all of us, we're going to have to deal with the cup that we've been given. And so the question may be this morning, preacher, when I have a cup that just won't pass, what am I going to do? We find in Matthew chapter 26... Beginning at verse number 26, the Bible says as follows. Then come Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And said unto the disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. The Bible says in verse number 39, And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Watch what Jesus says to his father. He says, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, Jesus says, Not as I will, but as thou will. And he cometh unto the disciples, the Bible says in verse 40, and findeth them asleep. And said unto Peter, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Says in verse number 41, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Bible says he went away again the second time, brother story, and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Bible further says in verse number 43, And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise. Let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. I want to use for a subject for just a few moments. When the cup won't pass. I want us to realize that all of us are going to have trials and tribulations in our lives. All of us are going to deal with uh, distressing situations We're going to deal with difficult circumstances. We're all going to attend the university of adversity. And I want us to realize that despite our very best efforts, that there are going to be times when our cup simply will not pass. And so the question may be, and and maybe you were here this morning, and, and maybe you have a cup in your life, That you try to do everything that you can, but the cup simply will not pass, Brother Joe. And so the question is, preacher, what do I do in my life when my cup simply will not pass? I I I want us to realize that, that, that Jesus, 
He is in deep sorrow and he's in deep agony. Uh, the time of his departure is at hand. Uh, uh, his agony and his humiliation upon the cross, Brother Scales, is pending. Uh, no doubt he is dealing with a very difficult and trying set of circumstances. And we find that, that in his hour of agony, in his hour of grief, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prays to the Father, Brother Russell, and he asks his Father, Father, if you will let this cup pass from me, he says, nevertheless, if it does not, not my will, but let thy will, Father, be done. I, I want us to realize this morning, first off, that anybody in life can have a cup. I want us to realize this morning that it does not matter who you are. It does not matter where you live. It does not matter where you work. It does not matter what you drive. It does not matter what you wear. It does not matter what is in your bank account. Anybody and everybody can have a cup that simply will not pass. I, I find it interesting, Brother Johnson, that, that, that this man, Jesus, had a cup that would not pass. When you consider that in Matthew chapter 8 and Mark chapter 1 and Luke chapter 5, that he healed a man who was afflicted with leprosy. That it was this same Jesus in Matthew chapter 8 and Luke chapter 7 who healed a Roman centurion servant. That it was this same Jesus, brother story, in Matthew chapter 8 and Mark chapter 1 and Luke chapter 4 who healed Peter's mother-in-law. It was this same Jesus, amen, in Matthew chapter 9 and Mark chapter 2 and Luke chapter 5 who cured a man with palsy. That it was this same man by the name of Jesus in Matthew chapter 9 and Mark chapter 5 and Luke chapter 8 who cured a woman who had an issue of blood. That it was this same man by the name of Jesus in Matthew chapter 12 and Mark chapter 3 and Luke chapter 6 who healed a man who was possessed with a withered hand. That this same man in Matthew chapter 15 and Mark chapter 7 who healed a Canaanite woman's daughter. That it was this same Jesus in Matthew chapter 17 and Mark chapter 9 and Luke chapter 9 who healed a boy who was possessed with the devil. That it was this same man, Brother Scales, by the name of Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 13 verses number 10 through 17 who healed a crippled woman. That it was this same man in Matthew chapter 8 and Mark chapter 4 and Luke chapter 8 who said to a raging storm peace be still. That it was this same man that Brother Scales taught about this morning in Matthew chapter 14 and Mark chapter 6 and Luke chapter 9 and John chapter 6 who fed 5,000 folk. Amen. It could have been more even up to 20,000 with just a few fish and a few loaves of bread. It was this same Jesus, Brother Lanier, who had a cup that simply would not pass. The same Jesus in Matthew chapter 14, Mark chapter 6, and John chapter 6 who walked on the water. This same man by the name of Jesus in Matthew chapter 17 verses 24 through 27 who put his hand into a fish's mouth and pulled out a little bit of money to put in his pocket that it was this same man in Luke chapter 5 and John chapter 21 who told his disciples to go out just a little bit further and the Bible says they caught a whole lot of fish this same man by the name of Jesus in John chapter 2 verses 1 through 11 who turned water into wine this same man by the name of Jesus in John chapter 11 verses number 1 through verse number 44 who told Lazarus to get up and to get out of the grave and the Bible says that he left the grave clothes back in his tomb it was this same man who the Bible says had a cup that simply would not pass and if Jesus had a cup that would not pass what makes you think that you and I in life will not have a cup that won't pass let me tell you something part of our problem as children of God 
is we have a false sense of security. Sometimes we delude ourselves. Sometimes we fool ourselves and we think that just because we come to worship on Sunday morning that we give our money in the offering plate, that we take the Lord's Supper, that we come to Bible school, that we come to Wednesday night Bible class, that we come to Sunday evening service, that we will not have a cup in life that won't pass. Let me tell you something. You can do all of that and then some. But that does not mean that you will not have a cup in your life that will not pass. Jesus is in sorrow. He is in agony. He had done all of these marvelous and wonderful things. And yet here he is on his knees. He's begging his father, father, if it be your will, let this cup Pass from me. Sometimes in life, when you have a cup that won't pass, all that you can do is fall down on your knees and ask God, if it be his will, to let the cup pass from your life. Jesus says, if it be thy will, Father, let this cup pass from me. So I want us to realize that, 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 that anybody... And everybody can have a cup that won't pass. Bible tells us, 1 Peter chapter number 1, watch this now, verses number 6 and 7. Bible says, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Now, 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 now notice what Peter says. He says, wherein you greatly rejoice. Now, I want you to know that, that this goes against conventional wisdom. Because conventional wisdom says, when I'm dealing with difficult times, when I have a cup in my life that won't pass, the easy thing to do would be to throw up my hands and to give up. But Peter goes against conventional wisdom and he says, wherein you greatly rejoice. He says in verse 7 that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. One of the things that I've learned in life, sister story, is that sometimes the reason that the cup won't pass in your life is because it's not about you. It is so that God may get the praise and all the glory that he deserves. You see, Jesus understood that the reason that the cup wasn't going to pass, Brother Thompson, is because it was not about him. It was so that the Father could receive all of the glory. So I want us to realize this morning, first off, that anybody can have a cup. The second thing I want us to realize this morning is that when you have a cup, you need to ask the Father for a little bit of relief. Notice what Jesus does. He goes away from his disciples, falls down on his knees. He prays to his father. He says, oh, my father, he says, if it be your will, he said, let this cup pass from me. Oh, wouldn't it do us a world of good, Brother Joe? Instead of going to Dr. Phil, amen, instead of calling on Miss Oprah, instead of calling on Dr. Spock, that we would ask God to give us a little bit of relief when we have a cup in life that just won't pass. Part of our problem is, is when we have a cup that won't pass, we go to everybody except the Father. Let me tell you something. There are going to be times in your life, there are going to be times in my life, Uncle Billy, when you're going to have a cup and family can't do nothing about it. Friends can't do nothing about it. Co-workers can't do nothing about it. Neighbors can't do nothing about it. And the only one that you can turn to to give you relief in your life is the Father. Jesus says, oh my Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass for me. So we got to ask the Father to give us relief. But watch this. Third thing I want to share with you this morning, you can ask the Father, but sometimes you just going to have to accept the fact that the cup wasn't meant to pass. Notice what Jesus says. He says, nevertheless, Jesus knew that there was a chance that the cup simply would not pass. 
He said, nevertheless, not my will. Keep in mind now, Jesus, if it was up to him, the cup would have passed. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, Father, but let thy will be done. Sometimes in life, we have to simply accept the fact that the cup in your life and the cup in my life was simply never meant to pass. I know sometimes it's a bitter pill to swallow. But sometimes the cup simply wasn't meant to pass. It was meant for you to accept it. It was meant for you to handle it. It was meant for you to deal with it. So that God could get the glory. Jesus says, if it be your will, Father, he said, allow this cup to pass from me. Nevertheless, it would do us a world of good, Sister Marshall, when we have a cup in our life, instead of leaving the church, amen, instead of stop coming to Bible study, instead of stop coming to Sunday evening service, we just say to ourselves, nevertheless, even though the cup won't pass, I'm going to keep on doing the will of the Father. Talking about when the cup won't pass. But watch this. We're going to have to realize and anticipate that sometimes we're going to have to drink the cup all by ourselves. Now keep in mind now, Jesus, the text said, he took his disciples with him. Uh, you, you, You read another account. Bible says he took his favorite disciples. Peter, James, and John, uh, uh, over there in, in, in Mark chapter 14 and verses 33 through 42 and Luke chapter 22 verses 39 through thir- uh, 46, you'll read the same account. A- and the Bible says he took these disciples with him and he told them now, just paraphrasing a little bit, Brother Taylor, he said, I, I just want y'all to, to just sit here. Now, now notice he said to his disciples, he said, I am in sorrow. I'm in agony, Brother Lanier. He's talking to his disciples. These men who had, he had built a three-year relationship with. They, they had grown a bond together. Uh, they had eaten together. They had laughed together. They cried together. They, they did the work of the Lord together. Uh, uh, they went everywhere together. And, and yet, here is Jesus... He is saying to these same trusted, loving disciples, I want you to sit here with me for a little while. I'm in sorrow. I'm in pain. I'm in agony. One account says he cried so much it was as drops of blood. My Lord is in agony. He is in pain. He is in sorrow. And so he goes to pray to the Father. But watch what happens when he comes back. Bible says when he came back, he found him sleep. Now before that, he said, wait, just, just sit here for a minute. Watch with me. I'm going to go off and, and pray. He comes back and he finds him sleep. Then the text says, he goes back the second time. And he says the exact same thing to the father. He says, if it be your will, let the cup pass. Nevertheless, I'm going to do your will. And the Bible said the second time. He comes back, Brother Nelson. Finds him rascal still asleep. And so Jesus, he gives him a little word of encouragement. He said, now, 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 be careful. Don't enter into temptation now. He, he, he said the, the spirit might be willing, but the flesh is weak. And so he goes back the third time, Brother Ward. And he says the exact same prayer. And the Bible says when he comes back the third time, the Bible says them rascals are still asleep. Jesus said, y'all just keep on sleeping. Said the time is coming. Son of man is going to be betrayed. What is Jesus trying to teach us? It does not matter how close you are to people, how close people may be to you, 
how much you may trust certain individuals and how much they may trust you, how well you may know individuals, how well they may know you, how much time you have spent together, the places that you have gone, the things that you have experienced together, the good times, the bad times, the fun times, the not so fun times, there is going to come a point when you are going to have to drink from the cup all by yourself. He said, could you not wait? watch with me for one hour? My Lord is in agony. He is in pain. He's in sorrow. He is in grief. He has a cup that won't pass. And he ends up having to drink it all by himself. We're going to have to anticipate in life that there may be times when we're going to have to drink from the cup all by ourselves. It's not that these disciples didn't love him. It's not that they didn't care for him. But you see, sometimes we feel that I've already got my own cup. And so because I've got my own cup, Sister Story, I, 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 I just can't quite help you drink from your cup. You see, my cup is already full. But, but the lesson that Jesus is trying to teach us is that, is that don't be surprised, don't be upset, don't get bent out of shape when you have a cup and you got to drink it all by yourself. Jesus said, just sleep. And sometimes we're going to have to tell folk in our life, just sleep. Maybe not physically, but emotionally. Because they can't feel what you're going through. Just tell them to sleep. Because mentally, they, they, they can't wrap their mind on what you're dealing with and what you're going through. All you can tell them story is just sleep. When they can't relate to things that you are experiencing in your life because they act like they've never gone through anything themselves, all that you can tell folk, just sleep. You see, sometimes we can be insensitive to one another's difficulties. We can be insensitive to one another's needs. And so don't be surprised when you have to drink from your cup all by yourself. But I want you to know something. I'm thankful that the cup wouldn't pass. I know that my Lord was in agony. I know my Lord was in sorrow. I know he was in grief, brother Lanier, but I'm thankful and I'm glad that the cup in this case would not pass. Because if the cup had not passed, hey man, if it would have passed, we would still be in a lost state on this morning. Oh, I'm thankful this morning that the cup wouldn't pass. Because a low wretch like me, able to be redeemed from sin. An individual like me is able to, to receive forgiveness of sins. An individual like me, Brother Thompson, is able to one day be able to hear the words of the Father, well done, thou good and faithful servant, but it would never have happened if the cup had been allowed to pass. I'm thankful that the cup wouldn't pass. Because now I can pray to the Father now. I can call on him any time, Ralph. Amen. I can fall down and get back up now. Because the cup wouldn't pass. Amen. Uh, I can have a new walk. Uh, I can have a new talk. I can have a better perspective in life. I, I now have hope, a lively hope. First Peter chapter 1 and verse number 3. Because the cup wouldn't pass. 
Amen. I, 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 I now have a, a relationship with God because the cup would not pass. The middle wall of partition between Jew and Gentile was broken down because the cup would not pass. Oh, I'm thankful this morning. And you ought to be thankful too. That sometimes a cup in your life, it will not pass. Because it's not necessarily about you. It might be that the cup won't pass so that you might be able to help somebody else. The cup may not pass in your life so that God and God alone might get the glory and he might get the honor. Now, I don't know what's in your cup this morning. You might have a cup of discouragement. A cup of defeatism. You might have a cup of disillusionment. You might have a cup of broken dreams. But thank God that the cup won't pass. I don't know this morning, but Brother Joe, your cup, amen, it might be filled with heartbreak. It might be filled with heartache. It might be filled with, with frustration. It might be filled with confusion. It might be filled with chaos. But you ought to thank God that the cup won't pass. I, I don't know this morning, my sister, but, but you might have issues in your family. You might have issues in your marriage. You might have issues with your children. But it may be that God did not intend for that cup to pass. He may have just intended for you to take this cup. Amen. Pour a little bit of water into it. Amen. Take that cup. And instead of crying, instead of complaining, instead of giving up on God, instead of leaving the church, instead of going back into denominationalism, he might have intended for you to take the cup and just drink it. Amen. Let it get down in your system. Let it work with you. And have a little strength to drink a little bit more. Amen. Tasting good now, Brother Joe. Amen. Don't let the cup pass. Take it. Drink a little bit more. You're getting stronger now. Faith is getting stronger. You got a smile on your face now. You got joy in your heart. You done came back to worship. You're starting to come back to Bible study. And you're even showing up every now and then on Sunday evening service. Amen. Drink a little bit more. Now your cup is empty. God has blessed you. He has brought you through your trial. He's brought you through your difficulty. He's brought you through your heartache and your heartbreak and all of that difficult stuff in your life. And now you can say, Brother Ralph, give me a little bit more. Amen. Because the same God who allowed you to make it through this cup, he'll allow you to make it through every cup in your life. Talking about when the cup won't pass. Anybody can have a cup. Ask God for relief. If you don't get relief, accept the cup that you've been given. And anticipate that you just may have to drink it all by yourself. The same God who gave his son the cup, same God that wouldn't let the cup pass on the third day. He said, son, I know I didn't let the cup pass from you, but I still love you. You get on up out of this grave. On the third day, according to the scriptures, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ even though the cup wouldn't pass, he got up, he went back to the Father, Ralph, and now he has all power in his hands, not only in heaven, but also in earth. You've heard the word. You're subject to an invitation. Remember the body of Christ? You're having a hard time handling the cup. It may not be meant for your cup to pass may be meant for you to hold on to it for a little while longer so that God might receive the glory. If it's affected your walk, if it's affected your relationship, come back to the Lord this morning. Say to him, nevertheless, 
not my will, but let your will be done. Rededicate your life. Come back to the Lord. Be reconnected. Be renewed. Be reinvigorated. Revitalize. Re-energize. Come back to the Lord. You're here and you have not yet obeyed the gospel. Right now you're holding on to a cup. And you need to let that cup pass. The cup of non-compliance. The cup of non-obedience. You've heard the word. You need to believe it. Repent of your sins. Confess that you believe that Christ Jesus is the Son of God, and we will bury you in baptism. You'll arise a new creature in Christ. The Bible says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You'll be added to the body of Christ, which is the church. Only one you'll read about in the pages in the book. Will you do that this morning? While together we stand and sing. I just can't make it without you, Lord. There was a time in my life I was living in sin, living without God. It made me start to wonder, wonder just what I did wrong to make my race so hard to run without you, Lord, without you, Lord, I know I need my Lord. I need you, Jesus. Be seated, please. Be seated. Please I be can't make. I just can't make it without you. Without you, Lord. Without you, Lord. Oh, 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 without you, Lord. Oh, I can't. I just can't make it without you. Oh, my Father, if it be thy will, allow this cup to pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. We will all have a cup that simply will not pass. But don't give up on the Father. If he could raise his son from the grave, imagine what he can do in your life and in my life. We turn it over to you, brethren. Brother Fleming, thank you for the powerful message. Wasn't it powerful? If that didn't touch your spirit, boy, thank you again, Brother Fleming. We, we, we thank you again for being with us. Uh, uh, Folk Street called a couple of weeks ago, said we, we want you to be a part of our, our fall meeting. We want you to do a couple of days and we're going to bring in another preacher to do a couple of days. And I said, who who you bringing in? They said, Fleming Jr. I said, I'll come and let you, <laughs> I won't come unless y'all let me first. <laughs> I ain't coming behind you. <laughs> Again, we're, we're, we're just so, so thankful how God has blessed him uh, in his ministry. And 
I, I tell you, we all come a long way. Uh, and, 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 and as he said, we, we fall down, but we get up. And truly God, truly God is good. He, he is so good. Again, Brother Fleming, thank you. Thank you all for being with us. We, we are just asking and begging you to stay with us throughout this day. We have a wonderful meal prepared for you, and the sisters have went out and done a wonderful job, and, and, and we're looking forward to Brother Fleming bringing us another powerful lesson. You thought he was somewhere this morning. You ought to be here this evening. <laughs> Amen, amen. Again, Brother Meeks, I didn't want to overlook you. I was going to save you for last. You know, they say they say the best for last. <laughs> but it's certainly good to have, have Brother Meeks. All the preachers that are with us on today, Brother Johnson and those who labor in the Word, we're, we're, we're just so grateful to have you with us. And so I'm not going to hold us any longer. As we continue to go through our day, we're going to ask our brothers to come that we might lift the offering, and then we'll go into our communion.